Okay, this is Dr. Holt. In this problem, we have a curve of radius 60 meters. It's banked along here, so a 1,000 kilogram car traveling at 40 kilometers per hour can round the curve, even if the road is so icy that the coefficient of static friction is approximately zero. Find the maximum speed at which the car can travel around the curve without skidding if the coefficient of static friction between the road and the tires is 0.36. Alright, in this problem here, first thing we want to do is try to find out what this angle is going to be. To do that, we're going to draw ourselves a force or free by diagram. We will have a thousand times 9.8 coming down. So that'll give me 9,800 coming down. What's preventing this car from, or what's forcing this car to go around in a circle? It's going to be the normal force. So draw this angle like this. This is the angle also we're going to be looking for, which is the same angle as this one right here. This will be our F normal. All right. So what we're going to do here, we have our enough information to find out what the centripetal acceleration is. So in this picture here, this is what our free by diagram would look like. Our mass times acceleration has got to go inward. So this value here would be 1,000 being the mass of the car times the centripetal acceleration going in. Now we know that centripetal acceleration is going to equal to velocity squared divided by r. So in this problem we need to find out our velocity. We have it in kilometers per hour. We need to make the unit conversion. And we know in this case that we can just divide that by 3.6. If you want, you can do and do the unit conversions, and all you do would be multiply by a thousand and divide by 3,600. So we will take 40, we'll divide by 3.6, and we get a value of 11.11. Okay. All right. So we have that value there. Um, so on calculating our centripetal acceleration. It will equal to the velocity that we have here, which is 11.11. We will square that. We will divide it by the radius that was given. The radius given was 60 meters. We'll run that value on the calculator. It gives the value of about 2.0, I'll say 2.057. Okay, so now all we have to do is we can find out what our centripetal force is going to be. And by doing that, we'll just take a thousand, which is our mass, we'll multiply it by 2.057. That gives us 2057.6. Newtons. Again, that's what force is going to be required to have this car that has a mass of a thousand kilograms to go around this corner that has a radius of 60 meters at a velocity of 11.11. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to sum our forces in the y direction. We'll set it equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction here. Now we know this object's not going to accelerate off the track going up. So we can just set that equal to zero. And when we do that, we will get minus 9,800 plus my normal force times the cosine of theta must equal to zero. We will solve for normal force, and that will equal to 9,800 newtons divided by the cosine of theta. Now we go back, and we're going to sum our forces in the x direction or horizontal direction. Anything goes to the left, we're going to let it be positive. When we do that, we will get F normal times the sine of theta is equal to, that's the only force we have, and that's going to equal to the centripetal, the, what's equal to centripetal force, which is required to get this object to um, rotate around this track. So we can just set that equal to 2057.61. We can say that F Again, F normal, actually, it's just, yeah, F normal. Let me back up. 
Let's substitute back in. Let's substitute back in what we know. We take normal out. We'll put 9800 over the cosine of theta times the sine of theta is equal to 2057.61. When we do that, that gives us 9800 times the tangent of theta is equal to 2057.61. All we have to do now is know the tangent of theta is equal to 2057.61 divided by 9800. We will take the inverse tangent of that value and we will see what we get. 2057.61 divide by 9800 it's inverse tan and we get an angle of 11.85 okay so now we're going to go back and we know that this angle is 11.86 so now we're going to um, find the maximum speed at which this car can travel around the curve without skidding so when we do that, we will draw a free by diagram using 11.86. So the first thing we'll do, we'll have 9,800 coming down. We'll have an F normal coming back up. Now the F normal is changed because now we're adding in friction. This angle here will be a right, is it going to be a right angle here? all these axes. Now if this angle here is 11, if that is 11.86 then this angle here is going to be 11.86. This angle here will be 11.86. This will be my F normal. And we go back and we know our friction. We're going to let it go to the maximum static friction. So this value here is going to be F normal times 0.36. At this point, all we're going to do is we're going to sum our forces in the y direction. And if we do that, we would get uh, minus 9800 plus F normal times the cosine of 11.86 minus F normal times 0.36 times the sine of 11.86 and again that must be equal to zero because we're not going to accelerate up in this direction here. We have enough information right now to find out what F normal is going to be. So we get minus 9800. We take the cosine of 11.86 and then we're going to subtract 0.36 times the sine of 11.86 and when I do that that's going to give me plus 0 0.9047 F normal and we're going to set that equal to zero move it to the other side and we can say that F normal is going to equal to 9800 divided by 0 0.9047 so if I take 9,800, okay, I get about uh, 10,000. And again, on my calculator, and most of this I am not rounding very much at all. And I'll say 33 newtons. Did a little bit of rounding there. So that's going to be my normal force. Now, all we have to do is sum the forces in the horizontal direction, x. We're going to let anything that goes this way be positive. When I do that, I will get my F normal, which we know is 10,833. We will multiply that by the sine of 11.86. That's going to get my horizontal component here. We come down to here, plus 10,833 times 0.36 times the cosine of 11.86. And again, that's just going to equal to the car, which is 1,000 times centripetal acceleration. 
go ahead and solve for this part first. So time sine 11.86 plus a value times 0.36 times the cosine 11.86 and that's going to give me 6042.9 newtons and we're going to set the equal to 1000 and we know the equation for centripetal acceleration is going to be velocity squared divided by the radius and we're given the radius in this problem as 60 so all we have to do now is solve for velocity we move the 60 up we multiply it by 60 for 2.9 we divide by 1000 we take the square root of that and that's going to give me my maximum velocity before I start sliding and we'll run that value and that value is going to give me a value of 19.04 meters per second Okay, and that's the procedure I would use to solve this problem here um, just make sure that in this case you have friction going down in this case make sure you, you're multiplying it and excuse me that you identify that friction is going to be normal times 0.36 because you're trying to maximize friction in this case um, and set up your force free body diagram looking like this and at that point solve and you'll get the right answer um, the angle wasn't too hard um, again it's just the inverse tangent and just follow my approach and you should be fine